hope we grow <laughs> <laughs> and i hope you you know yeah our culture uh, differences will you know not uh, come in between what we have and yeah Mm -hmm. that, that's the kind of sweet, that's a sweet message. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah try it, try yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know, I just want to say, like, I'm grateful that you are who you are and that, like, you can also, like, lead, like, our relationship, but also, like, our channel and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> hey! Yes. <laughs> don't leave me hanging. <laughs> Hello and Hi. welcome to Miss Reche YouTube channel. Thank you. So to start with the lady, please tell us your name, where you come from and where you are at now. Okay. Okay. My name is Miriam and I'm from Norway and I'm currently living in Kenya. Mm -hmm. How old are you? Uh, I'm 25. Which part of Norway? Uh, from the like south place, yeah, so it's like Mombasa or in Norway. Uh -huh. So your hometown maybe in Norway? Uh, Sengine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has like the uh, that's like Norwegian alphabet. <laughs> Can shout out to Norwegians who will be watching this video. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> and you? Uh, my name is Brian Kinuthia. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm 23 years old, mm -hmm. I think. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure I'm 23 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, I live in Kikuyu. Yeah. Uh, I think that's all. We do content creation. That's that's how we found ourselves here. Okay, and now briefly, Miriam, tell us how it was for you growing up in Norway, like your 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 siblings, your schooling, parents, and general life. How was that? Mm, to be honest, I feel like I had like one of the. I feel like it's one of the best like ways of growing up because we were outside a lot. Like Norway is very safe, so like. My house now had like 10 other like girls on, on the same age as me so we were always like playing or out like in the streets like playing like games and stuff uh, or board games and like we could just walk to school every day like everything was safe and nice. Mm -hmm. So I really like it and I also almost live by the sea so we can like go to like the beach or the sea or just do whatever we want and it's like woods and yeah. And schooling? In school, I went in my hometown, but when I went to high school, I went to a uh, Christian boarding school, so it's like three hours away from my parents' house. Yeah. Uh, so I moved out when I was 15, and then after that, I like, never kind of come back to my parents. So I've been like traveling, go to Bible school. I went back at the high school I was at and was working there as a a uh, social worker mm -hmm. and then I've been in Uzbekistan a year for uh, teaching English for uh, uh, like kindergartens mm -hmm. and then I have uh, studied in Oslo the main capital of Norway and for three years and then I'm now in Kenya mm -hmm. and your relationship with your parents growing up Mm, I think it was like okay like my dad is from Israel my mom is from Norway so I'm already like mixed uh, but like I would say it's okay it's not like a Kenyan like family like you're super close and stuff like they're just my parents and when you're 18 you're like I'm adult now like yeah I do whatever you want okay and siblings how many I have two older brothers so I'm the youngest, so I'm like daddy's little princess and I can get whatever I want. <laughs> okay. And general life, how is Norway? Uh, I think it's very peaceful and we have a lot of like mixed culture now. There's a lot of like Ethiopians or Somali people that's there. So it's like very like mixed right now. And so I think it's like fine and good and yeah. Okay. And Brian? Well, uh... How was it growing up for you? Where did you grow up? I grew up in Kikuyu. I've lived there all my life. Yes. Uh, the same compound, to be exact, because my, my whole family, we live together. Like yeah. my my grandfather, grandmother, like aunts, uncles. Mm. We just live together. It's like a formalized <laughs> clan in itself. Yes. Uh, so it was it was good. It's, it's good to live close to relatives. It has its advantages, its disadvantages, but all in all it's actually very good um, well, when it comes to schooling uh, I didn't study that far like at the start uh -huh. so like my primary school was just around Dogoto and Dogoto is kind of like literally just close to Kikui so 
Yeah, it's like I, I always felt at home even when I was in school. Yes. I never prioritized the right things when I was a kid. So like, I never prioritized school. Okay. So I prioritized fun. So <laughs> <laughs> I never did. What What do you enjoy doing, maybe? I just I wasted my time when I was a kid. <laughs> just <laughs> living, so, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to do anything fun. I just didn't want to be in class because even though, like, it's not like I'm dumb or anything. It's like I could learn anything in school if I wanted, but it just seemed a lot. So mm -hmm. I, I, I just saw it like it's not something I wanted to do as a kid. I just wanted to be a kid. Yeah, sure. So that was it for, like, for my primary school. And then I went to high school. It was very far. Like I don't know why I went that far. <laughs> Probably because I didn't get good grades. Or, but I went to Bungoma. Yes. It was very good too. Uh, like because meeting uh, new people, it, it had it uh, like its own challenges. But uh, it was it was okay. I still did not prioritize the right things. <laughs> okay. uh, uh, so school was. I, I ended up like seeing school like something that was not for me. So I was. I enjoyed things like doing small business stuff because yeah, okay. I mean that gives me the thrill mm -hmm. of life so yeah so I went out of school and then I started doing forex foreign exchange, for exchange. I, I, yeah mm -hmm. I do trade mm -hmm. yeah that's okay. the, yeah. how did you meet do you want to start or should I? Mm, we can start the we met in 2019 mm -hmm. in Mombasa mm -hmm. but I had been to Kenya before that. Mm -hmm. Which year? Uh, I came in 2017 mm -hmm. and I was here for five months until like 2018. Okay. That was with the Bible school so we were like traveling all over like Kenya. Mm -hmm. I made like a lot of friends and so I was like with a group like we were 11 students. Mm -hmm. So after that I had a friend that was gonna go to Ethiopia mm -hmm. and then I was like oh I can just meet you in Kenya because it's like so close mm -hmm. and it's like and then she was like oh yeah of course and I'm like really then I have to go to Kenya too like I just so that was just talking about it mm -hmm. so then that means that I had to come to Kenya myself so I came here for like uh, three weeks so the two first weeks I was alone and then I was staying here mm -hmm. and then in Nairobi and then I went to Mombasa for like holiday to like relax yeah. and that's where I met you. And before we come to him, Miriam, yeah? please tell us how it was for you moving from Norway to Kenya in 2017 mm -hmm. for the first time mm -hmm. and what were you expecting? I think that's one of my best times in life almost like it's not that I, I don't have a great life now mm -hmm. but it's more that I was so young I was like 18 and then I was with a, lo a lot of friends so we like we just had a great time I think even though I'm like extroverted now I think I was like extremely extroverted and I was just saying hi to everyone and just like like making time in my day and like in case I meet someone I can like go home with them and like like cook something or do or like get to know them like I didn't have like any like time frames mm -hmm. so I was always making time for like whatever like God wants me to do or whatever like what happens mm -hmm. I will do it like yeah so I think I was like more chill like I don't know what's gonna but I really loved like when we were traveling to like different counties and stuff and mm -hmm. like to see like different parts of Kenya so you were traveling with friends right yeah, well, it was like through a Bible school. So okay. we were like students, but we were like friends. Okay. So take us the journey of traveling. What were you expecting? You know, what shocked you? So take us the, the journey from Norway. Mm -hmm. That day you were traveling to Kenya. How like, was that? I didn't really know much about like Kenya or Africa. I knew that I always like thought it was like interesting. Mm -hmm. But I didn't like really know a lot. Of course, you can see like all oh, the mud houses mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. Yes. But I didn't really educate myself before I came. So when we came here, it was just like, oh, this is how it looks. And then, you know, like the hub car was there. So it was still like kind of like. Like well, like civilized that. and like mm -hmm. nice and stuff in Nairobi mm -hmm. but then when we like went out like further out and stuff mm -hmm. of course it was like a bit like mm -hmm. slower pace almost but I liked it mm -hmm. I liked it like unknown of things like 
I just the teacher just said okay we're gonna like take a drive now like to a place now like, I don't even know where I don't know how like long it takes I, I'm just there yeah. yeah now I arrived into Kenya for the first time what sh shocked you oh you know now you're in Kenya huh? Mm -hmm. I don't think I got like super shocked mm -hmm. shocked yeah yeah the only thing I'm shocked or not shocked but I, I'm not super fan of tomatoes and onions and yes. you cook that in everything <laughs> Uh -huh. Yeah, so it was like mostly, I guess, the food maybe. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. And the weather, Kenyan weather, how was it? It was very nice. Like, yeah, we like Norwegian love going on holidays and go to Spain every summer and so for the sun. So for me, it was like amazing. Mm -hmm. Like, skip the winter in Norway mm -hmm. to get the sun here. Yeah. Yeah. And the food here, how was it? Uh, except for the tomatoes and onions. Mm -hmm. I love the food, like chapati, samosa is one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Uh, mandasi and uh, pilau, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, and people in general, Kenyan. That's what I kind of like fell in love with the most. Mm -hmm. Like it's the like the people how warm there, cause Norway is very like kind of standoffish or like cold. So like we don't say hi to each other in the streets mm -hmm. and stuff. Everyone is just their own pay. Like everyone have like places to be. So nobody have like time to like say hi or stop or you kind of meet people that much. Yeah. yeah. You said you traveled for Bible study, mm -hmm. something like that. So when you landed in Kenya for the first time, where did you go to live? Okay, so we lived in Scripture Mission where we are right now. And that's like the home base for East Africa of the Norwegian church mm -hmm. uh, I'm part of. Mm -hmm. And then we uh, also like learned about the culture and stuff and food and people. But we also went to like kind of like a missionary like trips and stuff to like see different like projects like the missionaries have done. Mm -hmm. So we went to like Kapengoria mm -hmm. and Chester was the first place they were. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Woi, we have mm -hmm. a place there and some places in Mombasa. Mm -hmm. And my favorite place is actually Kapengoria. I think like the nature there was like so beautiful and like the mountains and uh, a lot of uh, the, my fellow students, they were just like by themselves and like playing games and stuff. But me and another student, we always like went out every single day just to meet people mm -hmm. and like playing with the kids, mm -hmm. doing like whatever we wanted. So that place is like in my... And we went there in December, so it was like the prime time, I feel like. Okay. Yeah. And after five months of spending here in Kenya, mm -hmm. uh -huh. what's next? Uh, after that, I went back to being a social worker at the high school I went to, because mm -hmm. Bible school went af right after high, high school. So I went back there, so I uh, did some social work there, and like uh, doing some like uh, entertainment and stuff, or like helping. Mm -hmm. So I, like we wanted to give back to the high school. Mm -hmm. That was like, because I had a super great time there, it was like being on camp, like for three weeks three years okay and uh, so I want to give back to that and then after that I got asked if I wanted to go to Uzbekistan to be an English teacher and the same as Kenya I have no clue like almost where it was I was just sure I love to travel love culture so I was there how was it uh, I think that was one of my toughest years because I was the, the only Norwegian there and on, and also only on my age. Mm. So the only person I knew or it was a uh, elderly or not, like 40, 50 years old like of a Swedish lady. Mm -hmm. So we speak the same ish language. So she was the one I knew and that was the only one I could, could kind of talk to. Mm. And then I got to know a uh, Brazilian family, yeah. so I like was with them a bit, but yeah, it was definitely like felt a bit more alone. I thought it was like be going to be the same as in Kenya, like everyone was like so friendly, it was easy to talk to people. Yeah. And then like there I have to like speak Russian and like I don't even know Russian and then it's hard and it was hard to get into people and it was more work than in Kenya. So like Kenya was already in my heart because of like the people and the great time I had. Okay, amazing. Back to Brian, yeah? Brian, now give us your version of how you people met. Um, I don't remember the exact date. <laughs> and I know some people always say, oh, you should remember the first day because it's, you know, magical or whatever. It wasn't magical. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't even close. It was, it was 2019. 
2019. That's when you, you met. Yeah, because uh, after she went back to Norway after Bible study in yeah, Kenya, yeah. 2018, right? So I just came for a vacation uh -huh. in 2019 after all of my er like all years of traveling. Yes. Then you decided to come back to yeah. Kenya for vacation. Yeah. Where? Uh, in uh, Mombasa mm -hmm. and uh, a bit here in uh, Nairobi, but mostly in Mombasa. Okay. And that's in Mombasa we met. Okay. Yeah. Uh, now tell us how you people met. Yeah, so I had just finished school, 2018. Yes. High school, right? Yeah, yeah, I finished high school, mm -hmm. 2018, and the first of 2019, the first, the beginning of 2019, I had not, I was not doing anything. Like, I was yeah. just around. You know? uh, and then my relatives from Norway, because I have relatives from Norway, uh -huh. so they traveled to Kenya, and then you know, as a family, because I said we live in a compound, we said, okay, let's just go uh, to Mombasa and have like a mm -hmm. vacation, small vacation. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so we went there, so it was fun because of the beach and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I remember this exact day. Where? Where in Mombasa? It was Diane Beach. Diane Beach. Yeah. Okay. It's, it, it's a, it was a hotel called the House. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, so. I, the exact day we met, I remember I was in a beach. I was I was given uh, like those goggles for swimming with my aunt. So I went to swim, uh, and I remember I almost died. That's that's what I was <laughs> about that day because yeah. uh, uh, I went in Mombasa. The tides, because of, yeah. of the tides, sometimes the the waves can come like violently. So. I almost kind of died, you know, but not really. I was not the one that was saving him. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> That's not part of our story. Yeah. Okay. It could have not been. It could have been. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Uh, so uh, it was me, my uncle, my cousin. It was it was a bit tough, and then I lost my goggles. I remember. So I was looking for the goggles everywhere, and then everyone, my uncle, my cousin, they all left. They went back to the hotel. I'm very sorry. <laughs> they went back to the to the to the hotel to the hotel rooms. So I came later. So I came to them later, and that's when I found them uh, talking to her because my my relatives speak Norwegian. Okay. And so they were talking to her. I just said hi. I, I had uh, no intentions or anything. You know, so I was just I, I was just like because I've seen them talking to a lot of Norwegians. Mm -hmm. This is another stranger, you know. Yeah. Like, we're gonna <laughs> see each other. Miriam, what were you discussing with? With his relatives and yes. stuff. Yeah. Uh, it was actually pretty weird because I was just at the pool and stuff, and then one of his uncle like came up to me and spoke Swahili to me, right? Mm -hmm. And then I answered like the small Swahili I know back to him, just like, oh, I'm fine or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then he was like, what? You speak Swahili? I'm like, yeah, but why did you ask me in Swahili <laughs> if you didn't think I spoke Swahili? Yeah. And then we talked a bit, and then he found out that I was from Norway, and then was like, you're from Norway? And then he went like crazy all over the hotel, like Helen, Helen, <laughs> Helen, because that's uh, his aunt. yeah his aunt that lives in uh, Norway. Yeah. Yeah. So like oh, so he found her, and then we spoke like Norwegian, like oh, where do you live in Norway and stuff. Mm -hmm. So he has also some cousins that's like close in age of ours. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I start hanging out with them and stuff because we were like bonding because oh they had lived in Norway for like at that point for seven years or something. So they just invited me to like home, like to their like hotel room and stuff or house and stuff. So I was just hanging out with them, and that's how I. Like, he was never around to be honest. <laughs> yeah. So I was just with the family, yeah. and I also remember I was uh, gonna see like there were a football game like Kenya against some other country, and I went out with your dad and your cousins mm -hmm. without him. Like, we went out to, he didn't want to hang out with us, I don't know why. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so it was like pretty weird, and then they went back to Kikuyu, and then I went back to Nairobi to meet my friend from uh, Ethiopia. Okay. And then they invited us home to like eat ugali and stuff, because I want my friend to like taste like the, mm -hmm. like, Good. yeah, traditional food and stuff. Yeah. So we were there, and then, so we went to your house and we like met like the grandparents and the parents and everyone so i already knew them before we even like was thinking of like dating uh -huh. and then we got in we got invited to your grandma's best friend's daughter's wedding mm -hmm. yeah so we were, like some random norwegians at like a random wedding <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah hiya brian yeah after greeting them in mombasa yeah. mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I just said hi, mm -hmm. and then I think she was also invited to come with us shopping. Mm -hmm. So we went shopping for foods because 
Uh, it's a hotel and we wanted to make our own food. Uh, we come back home. Uh, I, I think I came back home without them. She went with my cousins. I just came with Yeah, mine. he didn't want to hang out with me. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> no, it wasn't personal. I don't know. <laughs> At this point, I don't know you. So it's, it's not personal. Yeah. I just, I just want to go back because, I mean, it's been a long day. I was in the village the whole day, as I think. So I was tired, so I wanted to go back. So the night, the night that uh, the same day we met the same night. Yes. She was going with my parents and family like out and they had dinner. I, I was never there. It's, yeah. it's kind of like I was never invited. Where <laughs> I mean, where I, were you, know, you hanging around? Yeah, you know, when you're, when you're like in a vacation sometimes, you just want to be... Explore. You don't want to just, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you just want to do your own thing. So I was just doing my own things, going to the pool at night. They, um, they swapped yeah. me for him. <laughs> yeah, literally. Yeah. So I was walking around the beach at night. It was it was very fun. Yeah, I was never around them. Mm -hmm. So and, and I thought I would never meet again. So I mean, I didn't even know. I had forgotten her name at this point. Yeah. So uh -huh. <laughs> just yeah. I don't even know. Like oh. Yeah. Was and then suddenly I just show up uh, on the doorstep like, hi, I'm back. <laughs> no, no. What actually <laughs> happened is before you came, before she came to uh, like our home to have a gully. I was uh, I heard that she was coming yeah. like some two days before mm -hmm. I was a little bit shocked I was like how did she look I don't remember <laughs> I just remember she was beautiful she was yes. I remember she was beautiful and short uh, shorter than me so I, was, I just remember that I don't remember much about her I didn't remember much about her at that point yes. so I was like oh, okay it's good let, let them come they're yeah. obviously welcome mm -hmm. and then when they came I started talking to her at that point mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Finally. <laughs> yeah. Finally. I, I talked to her. It, it was a long because uh, they came. We had dinner and then we went out to have fun. So that's when I got her number. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And then uh, three or four days later, that's when we went to the wedding. Yes. And I remember I was now now I was into her because we had text. We yeah. were texting before. Oh, uh -huh. What were before you discussing? You know, after getting the number. Ah, yeah, I just I don't know. It's just like uh, exchanging like experiences and stuff. I don't I don't really. Remember. To be honest, I don't remember. I, I, don't, I don't remember too. So yeah. So at the wedding, I remember I was distracted by her. So I was just in church. In church. <laughs> we, were, we were in church. So I was just talking to her. The, the ceremony of the wedding is continuing, but I'm not focused. I had put my phone on one of the benches mm -hmm. that has her number. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm talking, I'm talking, and then when the church service was over, my phone was gone. I, I didn't have a phone now, so I could, there's no way I could communicate to her. So I was like, oh, I mean, that's it. <laughs> so, yeah, we talked, and I think she was leaving two days after to uh -huh. Norway so uh -huh. we never we never saw each other again so uh -huh. she just went and then turns out my cousin had her phone number oh. like one of my cousins who live in Kenya so <laughs> had her phone number uh -huh. I remember telling uh, my, my cousin didn't want to give me her number for some reason you know girl code or something uh -huh. <laughs> so I remember I went to my grandmother and I was like yo this, 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 she's not giving me the number I remember I was complaining uh -huh. like a kid I was like she's not giving me the number and my grandmother was like I had to force my cousin to give me the number, the number yeah, and then you know, <laughs> from there we started you know <laughs> talking i remember when i texted her i think it was my mom's phone mm -hmm. yeah i went back to my mom's phone <laughs> for a bit mm -hmm. so i texted her when she was like on the plane maybe on the layover between kenya i mean between mm -hmm. norway and whatever mm -hmm. kenya. Yeah. So uh -huh. there's a layover that's when i think i was texting her. okay yeah. Hiya, good one. Hey, Miriam, hey, after wedding, uh -huh. what next? What happened? And then I was just going home for like uh, continue my summer holiday because this was like in the summer holidays in Norway. And then I was preparing to then leave to Uzbekistan for a year. And so after the wedding and when I came back to Norway, I was kind of just like in my own space I didn't like look for anyone but then someone just didn't want to stop texting me and I feel like I'm friendly so I would just text everyone and like I don't care I'm just sharing everything about my life mm -hmm. and uh, I was making like preparation to go to Uzbekistan yes. by myself so I think I was very like lonely mm -hmm. so then it was like nice to have someone to like talk to and like share my experience with mm -hmm. because I was like again I was 
I'm not super close to my parents or like it's normal in Norway but it's not like you share all the details of your life with your parents oh. so it was nice to like have someone and yeah uh -huh. and I didn't have like any like friends to like like question it or whatever because I was like away they were all in Norway I was in Uzbekistan so I could like figure out everything myself yeah yeah mm -hmm. That's now 2019, you're yeah. still in 2019. Yeah, and from 2019 to 2020 when Corona came. Yes. So then I had to go back to Norway. Then? And then after that, we just, we kind of had like, while I was in Uzbekistan in 2019, we kind of like made it official, like between uh, ourselves. Yeah, and like long distance. Yeah, uh -huh. so long distance. Uh -huh. And when I came back, I had to like tell my parents that, oh, I'm dating a Kenyan and stuff and they're like not super sure about it but I'm like just relax I, I don't even know what I'm doing myself but but my friends were very supportive they're like oh typical Miriam like because they have seen me how I was in like the Bible school when I was here the first time that I was just like saying hi to everyone like we're super like interactive so like of course she's gonna end up with like a non-Norwegian yeah uh, so yeah and then in 2021 mm -hmm. That was the first time I could travel back to Kenya because of Corona. Mm -hmm. So then I stayed like right after my exam in the university. Mm -hmm. I like went the same like day or the night after mm -hmm. to go to Kenya to stay there for two months and then back for my like school start again okay. for my university. So I stayed at like your parents place with you and like your grandpa and everyone. Okay. But I already knew them so it was like it was like chill to like meet like okay. the parents in law and mm -hmm. like the grandparents because they already knew me. Okay. I have a question Brian. Eh? Yes. Who initiated this, you know, dating conversation? Because before you were chatting as friends. Yeah, so this is what happened. Uh, we started talking uh, like cuz I had seen her in Kenya. Yeah. There's that little time we spent together. So I was She's, uh, she's beautiful and I like her. So when I started texting her after I was uh, after she went back, uh, she said, "Oh, let's be friends and stuff." And I was like, "Okay, if that's what you think." Uh, in my head, I was like, oh, "I know where you're gonna end up." <laughs> 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 I was like, "You can, yeah. you can keep telling yourself your friends. <laughs> I mean, if it makes you feel comfortable." Mm -hmm. And then yeah, so we started talking. I I am the one who initiated it. Mm -hmm. yes, you know. Mm -hmm. And what was your response? Um, I wasn't really like looking for anyone. I think I was like at the point where like okay, I like being single. I know a lot of like single people. And yeah, so I had like a lot of single friends that I knew about. So I was like content. Okay, I'm gonna be single, and I'm like happy. And then he come in and I'm like, okay, just another like Kenyan that's trying to like hit off with me or whatever. But I just still talk to people because I don't know, I'm, I'm, I just don't mm. care. I just talk to everyone. Yeah. And then I think I was a bit afraid to like getting into a relationship or whatever because I've never like really had a real relationship. So I was a bit scared of it because I've always been the one that, that haven't done anything. Like I haven't like... Uh, drinking anything I haven't been in any relationship I hadn't kissed anyone so mm. I had, was always that person in my friend group mm. so it was like scary I was scared to like mm. now being the one that it's in a relationship yeah. and now like kissing and stuff you know yeah yeah mm -hmm. and how was your dating life before Brian I, I wasn't an expert or anything <laughs> <laughs> that's what you're asking <laughs> uh, it was, uh, I remember I was with someone like in 2019, but it wasn't really, wasn't really. I wouldn't say it was serious. Mm -hmm. But yeah, apart from that, I don't think I've, I've been in any other serious relationship. She right? was, she was a Kenyan. She was a Kenyan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you, Miriam, she was. Uh, he was a Norwegian. And no, he was actually a Kenyan. <laughs> ah, <laughs> so you dated I Kenyan only dated before. Kenyans. Wow, yeah. amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Norwegians are so like they don't like. I don't know, they don't tell you like talk to girls or whatever, they have to be drunk if they're gonna talk to girls or like something. And I don't drink, I'm not like a party person, mm. so I would never have like met any, I guess. Mm. Basically, yeah. Norwegians mm -hmm. don't have gay. Yeah. And I have a question, Miriam. Kenyans are more like flirty, you know, <laughs> no way. Yeah. I have a question, Miriam, right? Um, how, how did you meet 
your previous boyfriend? Uh, How was that? <laughs> uh, I met him at the hotel as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm at the hotel. In Mombasa. <laughs> <laughs> but the only you difference, the family too. <laughs> <laughs> but the only difference is was that that was when I was in the Bible school. Yes. So all my friends was like witnessing that I was like kind of like he was working at the hotel as like an animator. Is that what you call yeah. him? Like he was like a dancer at the hotel. Like yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, I think he's like hot and stuff, and like I love dancing, mm -hmm. and then. Uh, I guess he like uh, had feelings for me too, but I'm not sure. Mm. So we kind of were just talking, but it was like, I think we was like dating, but I was only there for like a week too. And I mm. like saw him like once after that and the rest was like long distance. Mm -hmm. But I don't feel, I don't know if it was like a real relationship because we were still like, okay, if you text, I have to wait like five minutes. Mm. Like it was feeling like we were still like playing a game mm. or like something. So I didn't feel like it was like, okay. How was it? Did you enjoy it? Uh, mm -hmm. It didn't last long and uh, like most of it was like long distance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Brian, I have a question. Yes. What did you love most about Miriam? Pat meeting her in the hotel for the past time. Yeah, tell what, her. What, what tell was that her. impression, you know? That she was shorter than me. <laughs> <laughs> we are short people. Yeah, yeah. and she's beautiful. Uh, yeah, she's, she's very beautiful. Uh, it's, it's just about because I was used to seeing a lot of uh, white people talk, so I, so I was like, well, she's mm. she's she's one of a kind. <laughs> <laughs> so and you, Miriam? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Um, you I'm kind of happy that I didn't like see him as like uh, someone I want to date in the beginning, cause I get like crazy when I like someone. Like yeah. I've had really big crushes in my life, yeah. like all of my <laughs> brothers' <laughs> best friends, like all of them, and I get like crazy. So it was like. I think if I would like been interesting from the beginning, I would have like screwed it up because I get like I would like stalk you and like do everything. So I think it was good that <laughs> I just saw him as friends because I was like I'm not ready for like a relationship. But I'm like happy. Yeah. And so I think it was better that yeah. it, like we just started as friends and we were just talking and then it's like slowly it kind of became our relationship. And what, what she really means is I was not attracted. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she means. I was just not looking for anyone and I had already dated a Kenyan so I was like, yeah. I don't know. You're just living life, okay? Yeah. And now, how was your long distance relationship? I kind of liked the long distance relationship. Like, not that, okay, not that I liked it, liked it, but I think it came with like good, pure, like good I mean, points. between you and Brian now. Yeah. Uh -huh. How was that? Because we learned to like communicate well and like talk to each other and not like get distracted like physical and stuff so we could like know each other like more mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. of course it was like hard but mm -hmm. yeah. how was it Brian? it was fast to be honest uh, it ended very fast because mm -hmm. we were long distance and then she would come mm -hmm. to travel uh, to Kenya so we would meet I mean she came back at uh, 2020 no 2021 oh, no 2021 2020 was corona yeah 2021 2022 23 I went, we went to Norway, to Norway. Mm -hmm. and now we live together yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah and okay. now after dating I had to take us to the next step so after we had dated and of course it's long distance so it takes like a bit slower yeah. so I had already been in Kenya like with you for two months in 2021 and then in 2022 I was like mm, is it point of me to go to Kenya if we're not gonna get engaged yeah. Because we have already dated for three years. Mm -hmm. And then if we get engaged this year, it has to be like a year mm -hmm. until we get married again. Mm -hmm. So it will be four years. Mm -hmm. So we kind of like planned to get engaged together. Mm -hmm. So we like looked at rings together mm -hmm. and like it was not a surprise. But I kind of like it wasn't a surprise because mm -hmm. to me, mm -hmm. if it's a surprise, I feel like you haven't talked about like getting married. But I was ready to, to marry him like in 2029. Mm -hmm. like, 2029? No, 2019. <laughs> yeah. Like uh, in December. Yeah. So like a uh, half year after, I was like, yeah, uh, yeah. he is good. Uh -huh. yeah. And you, Brian? It was, it was good. It was chill in the beginning, you know, before we got engaged. So it was, it was mostly like fun and games, you know, yeah. travels, you know, meet the family, we, we travel around together. 
And then when we got engaged, it started becoming serious. And I was like, oh, now I have to meet their parents. I mean, her parents and okay. uh, the friends. And so that, that at that point, when it started being serious, it was a little bit scarier too. Not in the context. It's not like I was not ready for like a committed relationship or anything. It's just that it was cute, you know. It's, yeah. it's kind of like, you know, when you get married, it's kind of like you're being responsible for someone else too. Yeah. So yeah, there was that fear, but at the same time it was good. Yeah. And then when I traveled to Norway to meet like the family and friends, yeah, it was it was good. It was a busy few months because yeah, we had to prepare for the wedding, but at the same time I have to meet everyone. Yeah, sure. I would say it was fun. Mm -hmm. And uh, now, sorry. Uh -huh. yeah. Now, how was the engagement? Engagement. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was good because I mean we had planned we had planned for it so it was not that big of a surprise I, I, I could have wanted to surprise her but she she literally told me like don't do that yeah. <laughs> she, she told me don't mm -hmm. and I was like you know the thing with the relationship you kind of have to understand your partner and like know what they want you don't give them what you think they want yeah so I just I'm, I'm okay if this is what you want and we actually communicated it was like is it really what you want is it what you think you want so mm -hmm. She told me that's what she wanted and I was like, okay, I'll respect that. So I respected that and it was actually great. The engagement was, was really, I remember that day. Mm -hmm. it was very, very How good. was that day? Uh, of course we knew about it or I knew about it too. So we got like a hotel in Nairobi just to like have the weekend for ourselves. And I was like, no public things. Like for uh, up to that point too, I was very like close about my relationship to him. Like I didn't like talk to about it super much because i feel like when i like i loved him so much that i wanted to keep it to myself like i didn't want to like get anyone to, like ruin it and stuff so i just yeah. kept it very like yeah. private yeah. and stuff so yeah we just like he just proposed in the hotel room and then we just had like food and watch movies mm -hmm. and, and yeah yeah we went out it was, it was very good mm -hmm. yeah and what was the reaction from your friends when told them mm, like all my engaged. friends knew about it yeah. like i've told them that we're gonna get engaged before yeah but my parents didn't know anything about about it like i barely mm -hmm. tell them anything mm -hmm. so i facetimed them like after we got engaged and i showed them the ring and my dad was like you married and i'm like no 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 not yet <laughs> i'm just engaged but they hadn't like met him yeah well, they have like talked to you like on face call and stuff like here and there but not like meeting meeting mm -hmm. but yeah i think they're like just used to me like just wandering off into the world and just doing my own thing so yeah. i think everyone at that point just said uh, oh miriam just doing miriam things like <laughs> we, we just have to like sit and enjoy and relax uh -huh. they're very like laid back parents uh -huh. yes yeah, so they don't they just let me go whatever and your brothers my brothers i think today just like I feel like I'm like the crazy one in my family. So they they ask my parents. She's just like, okay, she just <laughs> she's doing. Engaged. It's okay. She's like doing the old and non-traditional things. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and and I remember the night we got engaged. So that's when we were calling people to inform yes. them. Well, we know her parents to be more stricter than my parents. Yeah. So I was like, their parents will be like the ones that will probably not be happy for us or something. Mm -hmm. And we call their parents, and actually they are the ones who are happy. My parents were not sad or anything but they were a bit confused because yeah. I, remember, I remember my dad was like you guys were not married <laughs> yeah, they thought we were married i don't know <laughs> and i was like no 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 and i was like oh congratulations okay. I, I don't know if they were joking but uh -huh. yeah, it was very funny okay yeah. and your siblings um, it's my brother he's uh, he's a he was in high school, uh, oh. going to high school, so I mean, yeah, he, was, still, yeah. he has to be okay with it. <laughs> I guess at that point, everyone thought that we were married anyway, yeah. or something, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. and friends maybe? Friends, uh, oh, okay, you know, I, I keep, I make sure I keep like a distance between me and my friends in a way that they can really dictate my life. Yeah, sure, so, yeah. Uh, they had to be okay with it. Mm, you know? Yeah, <laughs> and now after engagement? After engagement, now we started thinking about uh, marriage and how, where, where it was going to be. If it was going to be in Kenya, if it was going to be in Norway, uh, and then it ended up being in Norway. Mm -hmm. we, we did a small wedding. We didn't want to have a big one. Mm -hmm. 
I don't remember why. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, <laughs> like, first of all, I don't want, like, a big one. Like, from my dad's side, in uh, Israel, it's like a thousand. In Kenya, it's like a thousand. Mm -hmm. And then, if we're going to do it in Norway, we can't have, like, all of his family yeah. there. So it's, like, unfair if I'm, I'm going to have, like, everyone mm -hmm. in my family and friends. So we just kept it very like small and like personal. Like we did everything personal. Like yeah. we, like yeah, we had it like my in my best friend's garden. So we had like an outdoor wedding, mm -hmm. and my grandpa he like like made us like married and stuff. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we just my best friend's mom she made my dress. Yeah. And I had like Lego flowers, we wear vans mm -hmm. and happy socks to our wedding. Like we just did whatever we liked. Okay. Yeah. And I have a question, Brian. Eh? In African culture, <laughs> yeah. men pay dowry to their wives, yeah. right? Yeah. Did you pay dowry? No, like uh, they told me not to. <laughs> <laughs> like we do not that at all. Like you don't even need to ask for like blessing or whatever. Uh -huh. You just, as I told, like when you're 18, you're your own person. So, like, your parents is kind of just there and then you're just your own person so yeah. you, nobody you don't need to ask anyone for like blessing yeah. or pay anyone or do anything like i remember i was the one who was insisting i was like uh -huh. we should do this and uh -huh. he was like no so no. there's no that um, no no okay uh-huh and why in norway why you had to do it in, in norway and not in Kenya? some of it was like for papers oh yeah like they're if we got married in Kenya, it's maybe not like official in Norway or like they don't yeah. trust it that much. Yeah. So we want like the papers to be correct yeah. like from the beginning. Yeah. So sure. that it will be easier later instead of like having papers here and then we have to like maybe get papers later. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. if we got, uh, we could have gotten the Kenyan one, but they don't recognize it. In, yeah. In, in, in uh -huh. And now the wedding day, how was that? Uh, again, I think we are like pretty like chill people and stuff. Yeah. So we were just like relaxing and stuff. And as I said, like we were, we had like my best friend's mom made my dress and stuff. So we were just like having a small like wedding, just the closest family and uh, some of our like best like best friends and his family from Norway that like lives in Norway. Yeah. So they was there. So that was nice. Yeah. And your family from Kenya too. They travel to uh, my family, uh, Kenyan family, we live in Norway, well, there, but not, not, not my father. But we're gonna have another one, yeah. maybe another time. Okay. People ask if we're gonna have like a wedding in Kenya too, yeah. but for, for other yeah. Kenyan members, I'm a family yeah. too. Yeah. Okay. I'll be honest, the wedding was, was very funny because. Uh -huh. Tell us uh, about that. Because it's all, I mean, all of them are white and Norwegian, so they can't say my name. Oh. So so when we were Kinu reading yeah, yeah, so yeah. <laughs> when we were reading the vows, <laughs> the the because it was the grum, the grandpa was like marrying us. He's not yeah. very good in English. Yeah, yeah. 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 so Kinu is not English. Okay. <laughs> so uh, he he was like, do you Kinutika? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm laughing. Uh, my ca I have my cousin behind me. Yeah. He's laughing. You know, like trying not to laugh. Uh -huh. Because I was like, who's Kinutika? Like, <laughs> <laughs> who's married? <laughs> this was not me. So it was very funny, like, and meeting people who cannot say my name, people who think they probably see me in a movie or something. Because, like, or they're like, like oh, some, you are like a Kenyan. Do you know this person? Showing like a random person. Yeah, like that, from Kenya. I remember there was a guy who was like, oh, I know this guy and he's probably your best friend. Mm -hmm. And then he shows me a random person from Naivasha. Mm -hmm. I've, I've never been oh to Naivasha. <laughs> so it was, it was, it was and crazy. was it the first time for you? to travel in Norway? To Norway, yes, it was. Now take us that, through that journey of moving from Kenya to Norway, how was it? What were you expecting, you know? Uh, I expected the, this This is, it's gonna sound racist, but I, I never meant it to be racist. Yeah. You know? uh -huh. Uh -huh. I expected every white person to speak English. I expected every black person to speak Swahili. Okay. <laughs> so, uh -huh. so I remember when I was in, uh, because I, I traveled from Kenya to Ethiopia and then from Ethiopia to Norway. Norway. Uh -huh. So when I was in Ethiopia, uh -huh. I saw some black people and I wanted to know directions. So I went to them and I was like, ah, Swahili. And mm -hmm. then they're like, I'm from Congo. So they, and mm -hmm. they don't speak that well mm -hmm. English or Swahili. And then I, I saw another white guy and I ran to yeah. them and I was like trying and they, they don't know English. Yeah, it was the first time for you traveling outside Kenya. Yeah, outside Kenya. Uh -huh. yeah, it was my first time. Uh -huh. 
So yeah, it was it was a bit confusing. My at the same, it was fun. I wanted to travel without her. She wanted to travel with me. On my first flight. I wanted to travel alone. So I, I wanted to see how scared he was yeah. and stuff. Because because if we travel together the first time and then we're getting married, we will always like travel together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I will never have my first experience mm -hmm. alone. So I wanted that. So uh, I got that. Yeah. It was very good. Uh -huh. Yeah. And what shocked you? Um, in Norway. In Norway. Maybe their culture, you know. How is it? In Norway, uh, unlike Kenya, in Kenya we shake hands every time we meet. Uh -huh. In Norway, you just shake hands when the first time you meet. Uh -huh. The next time you're not gonna shake hands. Uh huh. Like even if it's two years from now. Okay. When I see you again, it's gonna be like just hey. Uh -huh. and that's it. So I remember I went to there was a guy I had shaked his hand before, and then the next time I saw him and and pulled my hand and he just looked at me. So <laughs> I was like, that, okay. that's, that's different. Yeah. Uh -huh. And it's not rude, it's just, yeah. Yeah. It's just how they are. Yeah. yeah, and um, people are more quiet than Kenya. Kenya people are more interactive with each other. If you go to the street, it's easy to just say hi to anyone, even though you don't know them. Mm. But in Norway, people just keep it to themselves. For mm. example, in the bus, when, uh -huh. when we were on the bus, uh, just a normal bus, mm. there was empty seats, but mm. people were standing. <laughs> Why? People don't want to sit next to each other or something. Like personal bubble. Uh, but yeah, people yeah. just want uh -huh. to be, like someone can sit over here and they don't want you to sit over here. Ah. So, so it's like two seaters but everyone just sitting one, 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 yeah. one. And okay. then then people stand after that. Yeah, you can find like ten empty seats and people are just everywhere standing. Okay. And very long <laughs> long distances as well. Okay. And so. food, how was Norway food? The food was good. Uh did I miss Kenyan food? I wouldn't say I did because I didn't stay that there for long. Yeah. It was just two months. Uh -huh. But the food was good. Different. Um, there's one uh, food in particular I had uh -huh. that was bad for me. Uh -huh. My stomach. I will never have that food again. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, it's one yeah. of my favorites. Uh -huh. Yeah, I hate that food. So comparing to the, those kind of food, Kenya's, Kenya's food is very good. What it's about the best taco? Uh, I love taco. Uh -huh. uh, they, they have their own Norwegian taco. It's different uh -huh. from the Mexican one. Mm. I, I like that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was very good. It was there was they have even salmon because they I think they have the like yeah we are the, I think we are number one in salmon in, in the world yeah because okay. yeah, they have it in the ocean so we we have that like often. I loved our salmon. It was good. And food, I mean, and um, waiter. It was bad. It mm, was huh? no. <laughs> I'm I'm not kidding. It was very very hot. Hot. Like, cause now it was the summer, yes. so it was it was hotter than Kenya, uh -huh. like hotter than this month we've experienced, yeah. like recently. It was so hot, like uh, I remember at night you couldn't sleep, mm -hmm. like you don't have blankets or anything, but you're sweating. Mm -hmm. it, it was it was very hard. Mm -hmm. So I didn't I didn't like that weather, but after sometimes it started getting colder. Yeah. What about the light? And then oh, the, here's the thing. Uh -huh. So in Norway at summertime. Like uh, the sun doesn't set at like seven or something. Uh -huh. You can have at su the sun until like ten p.m. Even yeah, eleven. Yeah, see that from internet. Uh, like yeah. it's ten p.m. Yeah, that and was it's still bright that, outside. That was very confusing. Oh. Yeah, because <laughs> I remember we we could wake up, have breakfast, but the sun is still at the same point. Ah. So we had breakfast, let's say like at nine, but at like one, the sun is kind of still around the same place. Mm -hmm. So I think I just had breakfast, mm. even though I had breakfast hours ago. Mm. So it was it was very confusing. And at seven, I think it's one. My mind has not yeah. like actually accepted the change. So it was it was very difficult. Okay. And then you try to force yourself to sleep when they sun outside. So mm. yeah, it was it was difficult to adjust. Okay, and their people, the Norwegians, generally, how are they? I mean, okay, they <laughs> Kenyans are the best people. <laughs> I'll just say that. <laughs> Kenyans are the best people ever. Uh -huh. Like uh, Norwegians are just are, are good. Don't get me wrong, they're good, but uh -huh. they don't want to talk to you. <laughs> you know, what do you think, Miriam? Since you've experienced Kenyan culture, and like I get what you're saying of like I'm married a Kenyan too, so I have to be <laughs> something in it. But I think like it's from like an outsider it's hard to get into our norwegian culture like it's hard to like get to know norwegians like the best time actually to meet someone is when norwegians are on holiday when they're like outside norway mm -hmm. and they become a bit like more yeah. extroverted yeah. but other than that it's very hard to like get into like 
a friend group or whatever. So there's many mm -hmm. that come to Norway and get very depressed because they don't meet any friends, they mm -hmm. don't have anyone. Mm -hmm. But I think like after you have met people and they become your friends, mm -hmm. we will like be your like long time friends forever and like take you to everything. Yeah. But it's very hard other than that. Yeah, yeah. Don't get me wrong, like we have friend like yeah. our friends and family they're good. Yeah. But it's just like you asked in general and like for their friends and family kind of have to talk to me yeah because so, I'm, I'm now part of like okay. the family so they have to but for like the outside you know they don't have to do anything yeah. <laughs> so that now i get to see the real norwegians yeah but their friends so very good is it an affordable country comparing no norway, norway and <laughs> kenya no so uh, in their country they have uh these bottles that they're called uh, they have something called pant uh -huh. on it so you can take it to let's say a supermarket and they can give you money in exchange. Uh -huh. So yeah, you can literally collect a lot of bottles and get money. So uh -huh. I remember I I did that with like two bottles and I got like 20 shillings uh -huh. and I could not even get even one candy. Uh -huh. Even one sweet for 20 shillings. Uh -huh. <laughs> I couldn't. Uh -huh. so, yeah, I've seen from internet how yeah. expensive it is. Yeah, things there are very expensive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Kenyan money can help you there, but not that much. I mean, mm -hmm. the value will be a little bit lower. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. And for people who will be watching this video and they're planning to travel to Nolu for the first time, what yeah. advice would you give them? Mm, maybe have a host, don't go to a hotel. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Hotels will be very expensive, sorry. Hotels will be very expensive, so maybe have a host. And don't expect everyone to be greeting you. Uh, that won't happen. Yeah. So if you're going to be friendly and then people don't greet you, just know it's, it's part of it. But it's not like personal like yeah, we don't not, hate yeah. people, people it's just yeah. that we're very independent yeah. very like this is like my space mm. and stuff so mm. we enjoy each other's like spaces yeah 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 so we, we are like respectful in that way yeah yeah and what advice would you give people who travel I think yeah. almost the same like if you're gonna go to Norway you should go to like if you know a Norwegian go to them like make them like show you around and meet friends if i think if you're going there alone i think it will be like a bit difficult mm -hmm. yeah okay because like everyone speaks norwegian too all the signs yeah. and everything is in norwegian so mm. directions norwegian it's very hard to move like for me it was easy because i'm surrounded yeah. by norwegians yeah everything literally everything there are road signs buses everything norwegian mm -hmm. like, from numbers words everything is norwegian so it's hard to get from one place to the other okay yeah. and now after wedding uh -huh. so after the wedding we decided that i'm gonna go back to kenya like live here mm -hmm. so i took um taking an online study from um, from norway so i'm a student and i can live here because I was like, what's the point of getting married if we're still going to be long distance? So I w at least want us to like live together. Okay. So you married in 2023? Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And then after a wedding, you traveled back to Kenya. Yeah. 2023 still, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, August. So she, because in Kenya you can't stay that long. So she has to be go out. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you've been going to Norway coming back? I've been no. going to Tanzania and then back. To do what? Just to, to like over and be there a bit, mm -hmm. so I can have like this Tanzania visa and then get a new visa in here. Okay, so you love traveling. Yeah, you've been traveling together all alone. Uh, together. Okay. Mm -hmm. After we got married, together. Yeah, okay. together. And now, how is life after marriage? It's uh, it has its challenges, but it's very good to be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a lot of advices that scared us. Mm -hmm. What was the scariest advice you ever received? I don't know that marriage is very very hard. <laughs> <laughs> or like our differences in culture and yeah. stuff is gonna like ruin it or something. Because mm -hmm. if you're gonna marry it's like, I, I'm, if I'm gonna marry another Norwegian, they know that like, the culture and stuff. But I like that we're different and i like the security of marriage like i know that we're gonna be together forever so like it's like chill yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and because we are like we have like so like clear like cultural differences it's easier to see them yeah, yeah. then if it was like two norwegians mm -hmm. then it's like we m most likely have uh, like cultural differences mm -hmm. but we don't know about it because we just think it's the same yeah yeah, yeah. so what culture 
Okay, what? Okay, living together. What shocked you, like culturally? Um, uh, some of it a bit like how close he is with his family and like his grandparents and stuff compared to mine. Mm -hmm. And I guess a bit like cleaning and stuff, like cleaning shoes and like outside the house and stuff. <laughs> Um, How do you do that in Norway? Uh, we don't do that. Yeah, we don't, don't clean shoes. Yeah, we the don't shoe wash. will always be clean. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. So <laughs> it's like certain things like that. Mm -hmm. But I feel like people like have been like afraid, like oh, I'm only gonna be in the kitchen and like I'm the woman and stuff, and he's mm -hmm. like the man. Mm -hmm. But I feel like we are very like Western and stuff, and like yes. so I don't like I'm not at the kitchen all the time and. Yeah, I don't clean like Ooh. he is the cleaner and stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you culturally living together, what has shocked you? Uh, what has shocked me? Uh, I, I wouldn't say something has shocked me, but I'd say we've had to eat different things. Yeah. You know, like uh -huh. adjust because yeah. I'm not gonna have ugali every time because yeah. she will not cook ugali. Yeah. Like you just saw yeah. how she cooks ugali. Yeah. <laughs> she <laughs> does. She doesn't know how to cook ugali. Yeah. So I would, I would not expect that. So. Let, let's say it's her time to make dinner when she makes something i will have to you know yeah and when mm -hmm. i make sometimes mm -hmm. she has to but she yeah. she doesn't like it so what's your favorite kenyan food my favorite kenyan food i would say kenyan food it will be very yeah. because i mean the other food we know it's not kenyan yeah like pilau is <laughs> not kenyan yeah. or something so yeah for sure <laughs> yeah so i would say i'll say very mm -hmm. uh more than ugali because yeah. to me ugali doesn't have taste it mm -hmm. very has taste so mm -hmm. Yeah, so I would take it very. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and Miriam? My favorite Kenyan food? Mm -hmm. Anything with potatoes. <laughs> like, I think I married the right tribe, yeah. like the potato <laughs> tribe. Yeah. yeah, and Norwegians too, we love potatoes. So, anything with potatoes. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, who cooks in your house? We, the time? we both do. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I, like, he usually do like cook breakfast and mm -hmm. maybe lunch, mm -hmm. and then I mainly do the dinners. Okay. Yeah. So, do you have kids or are you planning to have kids? We do not have kids. Mm -hmm. uh, I want like six kids. Yay! <laughs> and that's like very like, like Norwegians have like one oh. and I want six so I feel like I'm like a Kenyan in that way. Yeah. But we have to see like maybe, I don't know. And you Brian, how many kids? Uh, we're not planning to have kids now soon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe in five years or something. Yeah. To me, I would be good. I would have been good with two, but yeah. Mo, Mo is okay. He is like more Norwegian than like, me, and I'm more Kenyan than <laughs> yeah. he. To yeah. me, to me, it depends on like the the financial yeah. state. You know, yeah. having a lot of kids is very expensive. Mm. I know. That. I want minimum four. Yeah, <laughs> and he wants two. <laughs> Max. <Maximum>. Max four. <laughs> Max four. <laughs> and now plans after wedding and living in Kenya and traveling. What's what's your future plans? Well, as a couple or as a family. Currently, we just uh, hope we get to travel more, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm hoping we get to, to like show mm -hmm. show ourselves traveling and provide the content. Yeah. Because uh, we started content creating. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And also, I think we want to travel more. We also want kind of to find like a home base. Like we don't know if it's going to be Norway or Kenya, right now we're leaning towards Kenya. But yeah, like I feel like we have been, I have been traveling like every single year and so I kind of want like a home and like a place. So when we do travel we can like come home like this hours. Yeah. Okay. And um, for Kenyans who are dating and looking forward to marry Norwegian men, what advice do you have for them? Miriam. Uh, is it Miriam? No, Brian. No. Okay. Oh. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's see. I start again. Yeah. Thank you. Miriam, eh? for Kenyan girls who are dating Norwegian men and are looking forward to marry them, what advice would you give them, and what should they expect from Norwegian men? Hmm. I think what, I I don't know I haven't like dated any Norwegians so I don't really know how they are mm -hmm. but I just think that they are more quiet maybe more maybe like secured in that way that like I think you know will know that 
okay he's there for you even though you maybe not say it or like show it way like yeah yeah mm -hmm. and brian for kenyan for norwegian girls who are looking for to marry kenyan men yeah. okay uh i would say to expect a uh, chill and very friendly people yeah because uh, Kenyans are very friendly. Yeah. Uh, the culture is very like welcoming. Yeah. So they would expect. They should expect that. Okay. But if it was the other way around. Yeah. It depends. I would say it depends with uh, the Norwegians uh, getting uh, married to Kenyan men. Uh -huh. I mean Kenyans marrying uh, vice versa. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Like the, if they are marrying Christians. And uh, turns out the, uh, the the person knows Swahili. Mm. To not be surprised, because when I was there, I found a lot of Norwegians speaking Swahili. Ah, yeah. So, many like missionaries and yeah. many people that have lived in Kenya that speak Swahili. Yeah. So okay. yeah, there are some of them who've lived in Tanzania for like 15, 20 years. Oh. So yeah, it was a bit shocking. So there's there's a chance if you if you were to like marry a Christian yeah. from Norway, mm -hmm. there's a chance they might be speaking. A different language than Norwegian itself. So Norway is a Christian country. Uh, it used to, or we have like a lot of base from Christianity, mm -hmm. but now we are like second. Yeah. Okay. So how do friends and people in Kenya describe your marriage? I think uh, kind of the same as we have like talked about, like chill and fun and like laid back, like. Uh, I don't like flowers uh -huh. or what chocolate. Like? Uh -huh. So people are like, oh, Valentine's Day, you have to give her like chocolate and flowers. And like, no, I don't want that. Like, I don't like <laughs> flowers or chocolate. Uh -huh. So I feel like? like we are like untraditional, like in dating. Yeah. So people are like, oh, you have to take her out and blah, blah, blah. But I don't like those things. Uh -huh. What do you like? Um, food, yeah. like chicken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, give me KFC or like Legos or something. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. She yeah. She Vans, socks. Yeah. Yeah. She mm -hmm. prefers Lego flowers mm -hmm. uh, uh, to real flowers. Okay. Yeah. And you, Brian? I mean, I'm good with anything. How do I people can. maybe <laughs> describe <laughs> you? Uh, I, I think they are they're okay. Okay. So, yeah, when I live here in Kenya, f do you feel like maybe strangers mm. think that I'm rich and mm -hmm. stuff? Like, I'm just a student, mm. so like I'm living on a student like loan and stuff. So I guess like that's poor in Norway, I guess it's like okay in Kenya and stuff, but it's not like super much. Yeah. But friends and stuff know that we are just like regular couple and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I, we do have had like some cases that people think like he's my driver or like people ask <coughs> him to give him my number like he's my husband you want my husband to give you yeah. my number uh -huh. so it's like a bit confusing like i don't think they yeah. really get that like no no we are dating yeah, yeah. <laughs> so can you white girls get a attention a lot here okay. yeah but i think i don't okay well, how am i supposed to say this i don't think i'm like the prettiest of the white mm -hmm. girls that you can have <laughs> like i think people more want like blonde tall mm -hmm. skinny ones mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I don't think that I'm like scoring that high. So w some of me was like, when he comes to Norway, I'm like, oh no, he's gonna like see all the other Norwegians and then think that I'm not special anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what made you love each other? Uh, and decide to get married and live together. I think for me, it was mostly I just wanted someone to share my life with like every single day like experience and I felt like he was like listening and like I could share and he, I was like trusting and stuff yeah. so just like being friends and yeah. like we could like share lives together like that's all I wanted yeah. for me it was because it was someone who liked or loved me for someone who I was and who like supported me to like be better you know? okay. So, like, f from when from the time we met till now, mm -hmm. I would say I've grown and changed a bit. Awesome, yeah. yeah, so I, I would say I've grown uh, mainly because uh, you know when you have someone, you know they can call you out when you're doing yeah. something that you shouldn't do. Yeah. <laughs> so that to me was good. Mm. Yeah, it's kind of like a partner in life. That's the, I think that's why it's called a partnership. It's just it's just someone who's supporting you. you know? Okay. 
mentally. Okay, and for your kids, your future kids, know when they come along this video, know to be on the internet, what advice or what would you love them to know about you? Mm, we don't as do parents. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe not like about us, but I think for them, I just hope that they will find their like own way. Like if it's a Norwegian, if it's a Kenan, if it's like, like, I don't know, mm. like, uh, Thai person, I don't know. Mm. Like, I just hope they will be happy. Okay. And of course, uh, I, I, I guess it will be a bit confusing with like mixed couples and like where yeah. is their home and who they are and stuff. But yeah. I just hope that they will find their own. Like, yes. they currently, if, if, if they watch this in the future, yeah. stop watching YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Go, back <laughs> Go back to books. Go back to books. Yeah. Okay. But I think yeah, for the kids, I think they will t hope that they will take from our like relationship is that just do your own thing. Yeah. Like even Me. the weddings, do like whatever you want, not just do what all the traditions are mm. saying. Just do yeah. what you want. Yeah. Do who you are. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Uh -huh. And now, what's your plans for your YouTube channel and your content creation journey? And now tell us your YouTube channel. For we just ish started our YouTube channel. We just hope that we can share our life, our experience, both like living in Norway and also Kenya, and like different things. I just want to be like good like role models for yeah. like yeah. young people. Like yeah, we don't drink, we don't do a party, we don't do all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So we just want to like kind of like lead and be there for like some like wholesome content yes yeah it's, it's quite the same i wanted uh, to show traveling mm -hmm. different cultures mm -hmm. like you know our life mm -hmm. our day in the life mm -hmm. those kind of stuff what are you planning to travel for like different people travel for different things mm -hmm. people travel for culture for food for people for street life mm -hmm. what's your intentions for us it's probably culture mm -hmm. and fun <laughs> like I think it depends on what country you are in too like some are maybe more like holiday holiday yeah. and others is more I love to travel for like it would be nice to travel like a, a month or like three months to uh -huh. a place not just like two weeks at the beach yeah but like really get to know the culture I think we want to like okay we're different like let's see how funny it can be like even though we're different yeah, like you don't sure. need to be similar you can be like very different and still have fun together mm. like we all are just doing life and trying our best and just like try to laugh about it. Yeah. Right. Sweet message uh, to your partner. I think Kenny just like Norwegian, I don't do those kinds of things. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You say that kind of Sweet message, what does that mean? Like candy? <laughs> yeah. Okay, anyway, uh, sweet message to your partner, Brian. Uh, I, I hope we grow. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope you, you know, yeah. Um, our culture uh, differences will you know not uh, come in between what we have and yeah mm -hmm. that's that's the kind of sweet that's sweet message oh okay yeah, yeah try it try yeah. it <laughs> uh, i don't know i just want to say like i'm grateful that you are who you are and that like you can also like lead like our relationship both like our channel and stuff yeah mm -hmm. So you didn't know how to say sweet stuff, but now yours is better than mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. And now tell tell our people what your YouTube channel. Our YouTube channel is the same that you can find us on TikTok. Mm -hmm. We have called it the main guy and the side chick. Mm -hmm. yeah. Why main guy and side chick? In the beginning, I think you just thought like, okay, he's gonna be like the main person, yeah. and I'm just gonna be like the funny person yeah. on the side. Yeah. But I think now it's kind of changed a bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I still think it's fun. Like, yeah. 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 The link will be down below. Yeah. yeah. Special. Okay, so it was nice having you on the set. <laughs> Thank you. We appreciate you. your time. Thank you. We actually enjoy it. You guys are very fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. You can interview every time, every day if you want. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And guys, thank you for watching and remember to subscribe to Miss Rachi's channel and leave a like. I think she should come here in the video. You yeah. have to see her face. <laughs> She's so beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> <Rembo -sana. laughs> yeah, no, you have to see the video. <laughs>